What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Today I wanna to do an in-depth technical analysis across all three indices, the NASDAQ, the S&P 500, and the Dow Jones. Now the reason I'm including the Dow Jones and the reason why I'm doing this video in the first place is because for the first time in quite some time, I am seeing a very large divergence across all three of those indices. Now the reason for this is relatively clear. The NASDAQ has been taking a hit due to some of the tech earnings that we've seen this week. The S&P 500 has been holding up due to its divergence and a very strong strong energy sector which is pretty much at all-time highs and then the Dow Jones has been the strong outperformer in the short term due to some earnings like Caterpillar, UNH almost at all-time highs and also with it avoiding some of the downside on those tech earnings. I find this to be very interesting something that we should be paying attention to and that is why in today's video I want to go ahead and run over it. So if you guys enjoyed today's video after watching it press that like button subscribe to the channel support the channel and make sure to come hang out in the pre-market live stream starting every single morning at 8 a.m. So guys, to start this analysis, I want to start on the weekly chart and really zoom out and look at all three indices, the NASDAQ, the S&P, and the Dow, and get a good idea of where we're sitting when we zoom out and get the whole picture here. So here is the weekly chart on the NASDAQ. The red line that's running across your screen is the 200 SMA on the weekly chart. And this line has been pretty influential, and it has been pretty interesting to see how we've been reacting around it on all three indices, and I will show you that here today. The next line that I have on your screen, the white line that's running across, is the pre-COVID highs. This has been a pretty interesting level. If When we go to the Dow Jones, you will see that this is where the Dow Jones held. And when we look at the NASDAQ and ES, we will see that we have not yet retraced to that pre-COVID high. So I think this is an interesting level. And then that 200 SMA on the weekly chart, when we really zoom out, are some interesting levels to get at least a picture of in the near term. So here on the NASDAQ, guys, we can see that the 200 SMA has not been broken for probably about 10 years. Back here is 2015, so that's about seven years. But if we continue to look back, you can see that we really have never broken since 2013 that 200 SMA. The last time we even got close to it was on the COVID drop right here. When we dropped here off COVID, we came right back to that 200 SMA on the weekly chart. And that is where that rally was originated, off that 200 SMA on the weekly. Now... You can see we find ourselves once again at the 200 SMA on the weekly chart. So it may beg a question, is this where the market tries to at least find some hold? We can sort of say that over the last few weeks, we have seen some consolidation around this 200 SMA. So I'm not, you know, here in today's video to make any bold claims to say that we're going to hold this level, but I want to make sure people are aware of it, right? If you watch my channel, I want to do analysis for you, share it with YouTube, share it with the subscribers, let you know that this is where we're sitting right now, that 200 SMA on the weekly chart, on the NASDAQ, that is where we're trying to consolidate around as we speak right now. Now, if we zoom into this chart on the weekly chart, once again, zooming in, we can see that this is where that 200 SMA is, and this is where that pre-COVID high. So that pre-COVID high is right around that 97.65 level, right around 9700 on the NASDAQ. We have not come back to that level. So do we need to come back to that level? When you see the Dow Jones, maybe you believe that you do need to come back to that level because this is where the Dow Jones has bounced off of in the short term. It's found some pretty strong support on the Dow off that pre-COVID level. So this is an interesting level to make sure you have on your charts to get a good idea of. This is really what I wanted to show on the weekly chart. Besides that, we'll have to dive a little bit deeper, which we will on today's video. So we'll jump into the daily, jump into the four hour, get a little bit of a closer look on the NASDAQ, ES, and Dow. But now I want to go ahead and jump onto the weekly chart again on the S&P 500. So guys, here is the weekly chart on the S&P 500. Again, the red line, the 200 SMA, and the white line is the pre-COVID high. And you can see that over the last two weeks, the S&P 500 has held that 200 SMA. I will zoom in in just a second to get a closer look at that. I also want to point out that pre-COVID high, which is around 3,400 on the S&P 500. We have not yet tested that level, right? That level is still untested around that 3,400. So do we need to come back to that pre-COVID high? Do we have to give up this crazy run-up that we saw in 2021? Possibly. But if we go ahead and zoom in here on the weekly chart, I can show you that right here, we are starting to hold that 200 SMA on the weekly chart. You can see over the last three to four weeks, we have held it. We have tried to bounce off of it. And then last week, we got a nice push off of it. And here we are this week, a little bit of green this week so far. But you can see 
that 200 SMA, it held right there. And that is definitely a level that I want you guys to be watching out for, that 200 SMA on the weekly, which is right around 3,600 as of now. So the next one, probably the most interesting one here is the Dow Jones. Now the Dow Jones, you can see over the last three weeks have been green. And it, since it's low here, about three weeks ago, the Dow has ran about 13% to the upside. And you can see that if we zoom into this point, right, we'll zoom into the last few weeks, scale this up a little bit, we can take a look at where the Dow pulled back to and where it was holding. So this was your pre-COVID high on the Dow. This was around 29,500. And what you can notice here over the last three weeks, the Dow came back to that level, right? It tested that pre-COVID high and it held it. It held it pretty strong. And it also held that 200 SMA. So again, has to beg the question, right? Does the S&P and NASDAQ have to come down to that pre-COVID high? Is that where we need the market to come down to on the tech sector and maybe on the S&P as well before we find a bounce? How does the Dow sort of react as it is sort of pushing up here off this level? If the NASDAQ continues to find weakness to the downside due to tech earnings, can the Dow sort of move on its own here? It is definitely outperforming. Dow has pushed up 13% over the last three weeks, right off that 200 SMA and right off that demand that we saw from the pre-COVID high. So I wanted to start today's video by just giving you a good premise of where these three indices are and how we've seen this divergence across all three of them on the weekly chart when we zoom out. Dow Jones up 13% in the last three weeks, a very strong bounce off that pre-COVID high, as well as the 20 or the 200 SMA. The NASDAQ being the weakest of the bunch in the short term, but you could also say that the NASDAQ has been relatively strong here compared to the Dow because it has not yet pulled back to that pre-COVID high. So you're still slightly overvalued potentially on the tech sector. Maybe it needs to come back down to that pre-COVID high. And then on the ES, you can see right here, same exact thing. Not yet back to that pre-COVID high, but starting to hold that 200 SMA. So definitely a little bit of divergence here, right? It, you know, it's something that I wanted to bring up. I don't really have a strict answer for you in today's video, but I wanted to share this analysis, give you a good idea of what's been going on and the divergence we're seeing across those indices. Now, this divergence can be alluded to something. It can be understood, right? The NASDAQ is all tech stocks. That's weakest in the short term due to the tech earnings. So obviously that is going to underperform. The S&P 500 has some of those tech stocks, but it is diversified across some other sectors. You have healthcare, which is very strong. You have the energy sector, which is strong. You have the consumer staples in the S&P 500, which is strong as well. And that is holding up the S&P when you compare it to the NASDAQ. And the Dow Jones has sort of just been away from tech as a whole. Very little tech exposure in the Dow Jones. And that is why you're not really seeing the downside in the short term due to that tech downside. You're not seeing it sort of transpired into the Dow in the short term. So with that said, now I want to jump into the NASDAQ, give you guys some short term look, give you guys some short term levels to watch out for and just some things that I'm focused on for trading in the short term to try to prepare you for the upcoming weeks. So guys, this is the NASDAQ on the four hour chart. And I just want to draw out some lines for you, give you some supply demand levels to watch out for over the coming weeks so you have a good idea of where we are trading. So the first thing and the most obviously one is up here, right? This is the supply that the NASDAQ has not been able to get over, right? We cannot get over this 11,700 level. This supply is very difficult. 11,700 rejection here, rejection here, and again, a rejection in the short term right here at 11.7. So make sure to be aware of that level in the short term. 11.7 is your major supply that needs to break in the short term. What you can start to see here, if you like to watch technical formations, is an inverse head and shoulder, right? Some people might say, this is your left shoulder, this is your head, and this is your right shoulder, potentially an inverse head and shoulder, which could be potentially a bullish formation. If that was true, you would have to hold this low here on the, on the NASDAQ, right? We cannot lose 10,900 on the NASDAQ if you want that inverse head and shoulder to become valid. So the 10,900 level must hold. It held back here. This was your left shoulder. It consolidated in this area. It attempted to hold here last Friday into this week. And we are now trading back towards it after Apple and Amazon earnings here in the after hours. And it actually held pretty nicely after we saw a little bit of a bounce off that 10,900 level. So if you want to see this inverse head and shoulder be true on the four hour chart on the NASDAQ as the futures open right there, you can see that candle just opened up. 
you have to hold 10,900. Losing 10,009 here will invalidate that inverse head and shoulder, and it will definitely cause a flush point to the downside on this market. So I think as of now, the two most important levels to be watching on this four-hour chart, if you're really paying attention to the longer term, is 11,700 to the upside and 10,900 to the ups to the downside. Losing that 109, I would assume causes flush to the downside, and breaking that 117, I would assume causes some squeeze to the upside. So as of right now, you can see the Nasdaq is very channel bound, right? Over the last, this is since the 30th of September, so about a month now. Over the last month, we have traded in this channel, and really, what I believe is that the market is waiting to break one of these sides. I would say 11.7 and 10.9 are the two channels that you need to watch here, or the channel high and channel low that you need to watch here on the NASDAQ. Next, I have the four hour chart on the S&P 500 futures, and there are some differences here and interesting things that I wanna point out. First of all, the rejection point that we're seeing is from September 21st, and if you guys know what that is, that was FOMC. This was your FOMC downside, and that is where the S&P 500 is finding some supply. Right now, that is around 3860, 3850. This is the level that the S&P 500 is having difficulty getting over, and this is where the S&P 500 will have to break out to get more upside. So 3860, 3850, that is a must-watch level on your screen. On top of that, that is the 50 SMA on the daily chart. So I'm going to apply these and I'm going to go to the 50 SMA and you will see that this yellow line that's running across your screen, that is the daily 50 SMA and that also lines up with that FOMC rejection point that we are seeing right now. So that's the first thing that I want you to pay attention to, that 3860, 3850. I think that is a very important level here in the short term. Now, the next thing I want to point out here on the ES is the channel that we have made over the last few weeks. If we draw this channel out, we will see that this channel has continued to hold and it is actually holding here in the after hours as we speak. So on earnings on Amazon and, e and Apple, we saw that downside on the S&P 500 and we held that channel almost perfectly here. I found that to be a little bit interesting. That is right at 3760. So that 3760 level I think is important. We have that channel that has been created over the last few weeks and we have to see if we can continue to hold this channel. If we break this channel, I would assume downside. If we get a push and we get a push through this 3860, maybe there's a move back to the channel high before another rejection, right? So keep an eye on this channel on the four hour. See if the ES wants to continue to trade in this channel. It has been trading in this channel since the 13th of October. The last thing I wanna point out here, guys, is just that extreme channel low that has to hold here on the ES. I think that's right around this 3575, 3580. We can see that we bottomed here back on the 2nd of October. We bottomed again here, right here on the uh, 11th of October. We bottomed there again on the 14th of October. So to me, it looks like that is the extreme channel low. If we were to break this channel here, this uptrending channel, I think you probably could see that move down to that channel low, right? And that must hold. If we break this low, downside continuation, right? Same thing as we were talking about on the NASDAQ. We have our channel that has been formed. We can see that today. We can draw that same channel. Today, we broke this uptrending channel on the NASDAQ due to tech earnings. So you can see right there, we had that channel that the ES is holding right now, but we gave it up off tech earnings. If we go to the ES, we can see that we are still holding that level. And this gives you an idea of that outperformance that we're seeing on the ES versus the NASDAQ. And the last one I have for you here, guys, is the... And the last one that I have for you is the four hour chart on the Dow Jones and we can see the outperformance here. Let's compare these charts. So the first thing I wanna point out is that level that the S&P 500 is rejecting. That is your pre-FOM, or that's your FOMC low. That is right here. This is September 21st. This is around 30,665. So if we compare the Dow to the S&P 500, the S&P 500 is rejecting this level right here. If we go back to the S&P 500, this is where it's rejecting, that 921 level right around here. You can see that rejection that's coming in. If we go to the Dow Jones, that level rejected previously, but we are well above it now. So it rejected back here around, uh, this was the 18th of October. We rejected it momentarily, but we got a major push through it right here, and we continued very strong. You can see the Dow has been a very strong outperformer. If we draw that channel, 
from the low. You can see that that channel is very strong. We are continuing in that channel. We have not tested the low once again. We tested it here. We tested it here. But we have continued to have a very strong push here on the Dow Jones. We can also see that the Dow has been able to get above the 100 SMA on the daily chart. It actually held it as support here two days ago. And we are approaching that 200 SMA on the daily chart up here around 32,610. Now, my assumption as of right now is that that is where the, the Dow Jones is going to find a major rejection point. So if I clean this up a little bit, you can see that this previous high, this supply high around 32,600 is where that 200 SMA comes into play. My assumption is that maybe the Dow has a little bit more towards that 200 SMA, but I think that's going to be a very difficult level for the Dow to break out of, and we could see some short-term downside here off that 32,600, which also lines up with that 200 SMA on the Dow. So guys, to end today's video, I just want to give you a very interesting graphic. You can see here on your screen, the white candles is the NASDAQ futures, and the red and green candles is the Dow Jones. Look at the divergence that we have seen over the last two weeks. You can see on the left side of your screen, they are pretty much identical, right? Dow Jones, NASDAQ, almost identical. And then over the last two weeks, look at the divergence that we are starting to see. Look at where that potential growth is coming from in the Dow Jones. Interesting, right? Wanted to get this point across. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I don't have any bold predictions for you. That is not my job. I do not try to guess the future, but I give analysis. I give insight and education to you guys who do watch the channel. Press that like button, subscribe to the channel, and I hope to see you in the next one. Peace.